I love Mass Effect games. Having played all three, I invested 108 hours into Mass Effect Andromeda. I reached 97% completion and I got my character to level 64. After completing Mass Effect Andromeda, there are only four words that sum up my experience. ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! Hey Hill. Hill here. Gaming. First of all, I have to say, shame on you Bioware for releasing a broken, unfinished game. Clearly, five years weren't enough. There are so many bugs and flaws in this game that it just made for an aggravating and frustrating experience. I was so excited to play Mass Effect Andromeda and when I finally did, I was met with nothing but disappointment. So let's start at the beginning. The character creator. Now, Bioware has had experience already with the Frostbite engine in Dragon Age Inquisition. It should have been a simple thing to port that character design over to Mass Effect Andromeda. But instead, what we get is a, I mean, it, the character creator can't even be described as robust. I mean, you choose a face and then you're stuck with the features that that face has. In previous creators, like in Dragon Age Inquisition, if I chose this face that you see on the screen here, you could make other alterations, like choose a different set of eyebrows, a different eye shape, there were all sorts of features that were built into the character creator that for some reason were removed or stripped out or never put in to begin with in the Andromeda creator, which points to the fact, again, that this game was not even ready to be released. I mean, this is like some beta tool that somebody just put out there. Oh yeah, take a look at this character creator, build your character, and go ahead and play for a few hours and see how much you enjoy it. I mean, that's all this is good for. This can't possibly be the creator that you would use in a finished game. And then on top of all of this, what they do is add every color under the rainbow to this character creator. Is this to maybe, I don't know, confuse people or make it look like, oh wow, look at all these things the character creator can do. But really, in reality, the only thing it does is make your character look like a damn clown! What is this? A clown creator? Now, let's take a look at the journal in the game, which is arguably one of the most bugged aspects of Mass Effect Andromeda. They have the journal organized here into, you know, different uh, planets and whatnot, and what you can do on each of the planets. And that works well. Uh, it'll show you if you go, you know, like to Eos or Kadara, any of those planets. It'll show you, you know, where you need to go on the planet. It'll, it'll give you a marker to follow. But when you go into additional tasks, there aren't any markers. You don't even know what planet these assignments are on. There's no clue. There's no indication. It's almost as though this category of additional tasks was what was left over that they didn't get a chance to categorize into the right containers or folders. A perfect example of unfinishedness. Hurried out the door. How am I supposed to complete this multitude of assignments if I don't even know what planet to go to? ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! This is just outrageous! As you can see here, we're looking at the galaxy map. I'm selecting these additional tasks. And there's nothing on the galaxy map that tells me where to go. But, you know, if you do go into one of these folders that is categorized by planet, I've marked the assignment here. And I go, look, I've got a marker already. Got a marker to use the galaxy map. And it's going to show me, well, where I need to go, the planet. I mean, of course, we know it's EOS already. But when I land on EOS, 
there'll be a marker on the planet for me to proceed and complete the mission, making an impression. This is how all the assignments should work. So that you're not given an assignment and you have no idea, well, where do I need to go? And here are just a few more examples of problems with the game. How the enemy became unresponsive here, didn't even recognize that I was there, I was shooting at it. Um, and this is after, you know, going through quite a bit to rescue these uh, prisoners and whatnot, only to have the game glitch so that I can't finish the mission because the enemies here are completely unresponsive. I mean, did anybody do any sort of quality assurance on this game? This, this is just unbelievable. And this type of glitch requires you to shut the game down and reboot it and restart it so that you can get these things working again. I, I just can't tell you how disappointed I was. Here's another glitch where I'm going to do Veteran Nick's uh, loyalty mission, means and end. So we selected uh, the destination on our galaxy map and uh, we travel to that destination, as you can see here. And I don't think I used the skip feature this time, but uh, when we got there, finally, the game decided to stop working. Completely unresponsive. There was nothing I could do here but shut down the game. And I was doing a live stream at the time, so I had to cut my live stream extremely short. I think we were only at 20 minutes when this happened. I just don't know what to say. I mean, who, who tested this? Who thought it was a good idea to release this game in the state that it was in? I, I would like some names. I really would. I've coined a new catchphrase for Bioware, and I'm going to call it imitation is the sincerest form of lack of imagination. You see here we have the ending credits uh, to Mass Effect Andromeda and a cutscene afterwards now, I don't know if they think they're Marvel comics or you know where this is coming from but just hold all this in mind so after this cutscene then we end up uh, I guess it's back on the Nexus or the Ark or somewhere and there's a party going on and you get to talk or chat with all of your crewmates now, folks, I hate to tell you this, but this has all been done before. Seen that, done that. Whatever happened to Mass Effect having its own unique identity? This is being pulled from the ending of Dragon Age Inquisition. The same things. And we're going to look at that in just a moment. A hidden cutscene, and then a party at the end where you get to talk with all of your squad mates or crew mates in that game as well. Where, where is the imagination? Where is the innovation? Where is the identity of Mass Effect? It's gone. This is no longer Mass Effect. This is Dragon Age Inquisition in space. But it didn't just end with copying and pasting the ending of Dragon Age Inquisition into Mass Effect Andromeda. They also copied and pasted special effects, like this magical bridge that just extends out before the Inquisitor. Three years ago, you know, this was nice. This was a nice special effect to have in your game. It looked awesome. But why, three years later, do we see the same thing in Mass Effect Andromeda? Look, look at this. Yes, it has some technical aspects to it, but it's the same effect, copied and pasted from one game into another. Why? You had five years to come up with something amazing. And what we get is copied and pasted from a three-year-old game? As far as characters go, there's really only one word that I could use to describe them. And that's hollow. They are just a, a pale reflection of Shepard's crew and, and the characters that were in the, the original trilogy. Characters that I really came to care for and connect with. But these characters here, 
really, you know, anything but a connection. I mean, Vetra was probably my favorite character. I think one of the, the most best portrayed characters uh, in this game. Um, Liam was just ridiculous. I mean, he was just, I guess he was comic relief and he wasn't funny. Um, Drac, I really liked as a squad mate, but he was a direct ripoff from Erd Not Rex from the original trilogy. And I often in my stream called him Rex, 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 because I can't distinguish him from Rex. He sounds like Rex. Yes, his armor is a little different and he has the, the bones or something sticking through his jaw. And he doesn't have biotics, but my God, I mean, just to hear him talk and his reactions and all that kind of stuff, this is Erd Not Rex. This isn't Drac who? So, yeah, I really, really had a problem with the, with the characters. They just didn't feel fleshed out. I didn't connect to them. I really didn't even care. In fact, you know, some of them, like PB, Pelisaria, I just didn't like at all. They, they were like unlikable creatures, people, whatever. And then the Angara as a race, I just, I just objected to that because I felt that they were... What do I say? Ripoffs of of Javik and the Protheans? I mean, how many more horse-legged races are is Bioware going to put into their game? I mean, really, there has to, at some point, be some innovation put into your series. You can't have all aliens have horse legs. I mean, I would rather them have looked human. I mean, that in itself would have been different than... Oh my God, another horse-legged race. I mean, good Lord, we traveled 600 years to Andromeda to see more horse legs. I mean, we already have Krogan and we have Turians and we have Quarians and the list goes on. And now we get here and there are more horse-legged races. No, no, this just was not imaginative at all. I really don't know. I mean, these guys were buried and, you know, I can understand the creative process when you get so deep into something and you've been swallowed up by it for five years. You, you don't see things the way the rest of the world does. I mean, you guys, you developers, I'm sure you thought this was the most amazing thing ever. But the reality was that it isn't. This is so derivative. This is so unimaginative. This is so shallow. It is so hollow. This is barely Mass Effect. I'm going to talk a little bit about multiplayer. Five years this game was in development, and we basically got the same multiplayer that was in Mass Effect 3. There has been literally no innovation to multiplayer, and I cannot tell you how disappointed I am having to say that. I was really looking forward to multiplayer and I was expecting things such as it borrowing from oh let's say the campaign of Andromeda where you could actually set up your own classes you know maybe mix and match your own powers create your own multiplayer characters and being able to manipulate your own power kits. It's been five years why can't we do that? Why can't we even map our power buttons to buttons that we're most comfortable with? So, I'm going to have to use the word here. For me, multiplayer was a fail. You can't just copy something from another game and expect people to enjoy it. I'm not enjoying it. Not one bit. Mass Effect games, at least in my opinion, have been known for some fantastic, inspiring musical scores. And I want to talk a little bit about the music in Mass Effect Andromeda. And I, I just have to say that the scores that were chosen for this game are the most uninspiring, flat, dull musical scores that I have ever heard in a video game. 
they don't elicit any sort of emotion they don't really set the scene they don't fill you with dread or awe or any of the things that you should be feeling because I, I have this this is my my one comment so far a positive about this game is that the game looks beautiful the the backdrops the environments the landscapes the spacescapes it's a beautiful game and a musical score could add so much to that it would add so much depth i mean you would actually feel like dread when you're in these remnant vessels or constructs and whatnot much like i felt in mass effect 2 when i first went on board the collector ship the musical score that was in that game was just amazing i don't know what happened with this game i don't know where the money was invested or the time was invested because it seems like in the five years everything came up short and flat and disappointing I wanted to talk about the length of the game yes I played for a hundred and eight hours but most of that time spent playing this game I don't know of a nice way to put this but the game wastes your time. You do these meaningless quests, fetch quests as, as they're most commonly called, where you go to a planet and you'll go from point A to point B and find out that point B is a false signal and then you have to go to point C and then point D and then maybe loop back around to point A again or oh no now you've got to go to this planet and find something or oh after I've found it on this planet now I've got to go to this planet or I've got to go to this sector and look for something and then back to this one and then back again and then you just keep on going on and on and on on and on and on it's like these quests and stuff just don't stop and it just exhausts your time you just it's, it's just one place after another and usually when you get to one one objective one marker there's nothing there so I have to say that these quests were, well, they were terrible. I mean, I'll just come out and say it. They were terrible. They were a waste of my time and they weren't fun. That is the biggest thing. People play video games for fun. Why would you think, Bioware, that people wanted to spend, oh, let's say I spent 60 hours of my time on these fetch quests why do you think I would want to spend all that time having my time wasted and not having fun? Now, the only reason I did this is because I really wanted to give this game a chance. And I really wanted to say that I did everything that there was to do in this game. And I made it to 97% completion. So I did almost everything that you wanted me to do. And I have to say, for the most part, it was a complete waste of my time. Now, I do have to say, though, on the positive side, the linear story missions and the backdrops and the spacescapes and the landscapes, they are the only place in this game where the game shines. Those are the only things about this game that made it playable for me. So that's why if you guys are, you know, you've made it this far in my review and said, well, why the hell did you play 108 hours and all these things that you've said about the game? Well, you know, there are those two things. I love the linear story missions and, you know, they were reflective I guess of other Mass Effect games you know reminiscent of that those were good oh and the combat we'll sort of say that the combat was okay very dynamic but it's a huge change from the previous games if you are old school like me and have played Mass Effect as many times as I have it is a huge shift in going from the crate to crate cover to cover uh, using your squad mates to set up combos and whatnot. I mean, you really, you can do that, but you kind of can't. It's all driven by the AI and whether or not it wants to help you out and, you know, initiate a combo. It's, it's very iffy and dicey. And, you know, not, 
not Mass Effect. I mean, it's really Mass Effect. This game, really, they they've lost their way. And I have to say, if there was a, a shuttle or a ship that I could get on in Andromeda that would take me back to the Milky Way, I would take that journey. I think, this is my opinion, that you really need to go back to what worked. Go back to the Milky Way, go back to N7, go back to squad mates, go back to classes go back to setting up combos and you know that's another thing that, that comes to mind that, that was very disappointing in this game you cannot customize your squad mates you can't give them a different gun you can't put on a different set of armor you can't tell them to you know charge or you know use a power when you want them to it's all dependent on the AI and so you know, I'm just going to say the combat was was okay at best. Personally, honestly, I didn't enjoy it. So I'm just going to put that out there. But it is different. It is dynamic. It can be fun in a lot of cases. I know a lot of people have enjoyed it. I'm just not one of them. So in conclusion, I'd say the Mass Effect franchise is on a downward spiral ever since the ending of Mass Effect 3. I was really hoping that they were going to redeem themselves with Mass Effect Andromeda, but it, it's been anything but. It's, it's been a very shallow, hollow, unimaginative experience for me. Um, would I recommend this game? Uh, there is fun to be had in it if you stick to the linear story missions and you know you probably are only going to get maybe 15 to 20 hours of gameplay out of this if you avoid all those repetitive nonsensical fetch quests. The story missions are there is fun to be had but should you pay $60 for it? Absolutely not. It is not worth that much. So if you see this game on sale, and I'm talking about a $29.99 and below sale, then certainly pick up a copy of Mass Effect Andromeda. But it is not worth anything above that. So, my final score for Mass Effect Andromeda would be a 5 out of 10. It's my sincere hope that Bioware will finally finish this game and patch it and add content and just bring the game to the life it should have had on release. I mean, adding shaders to eyes and, you know, having to fix animations and things, those, those are like the finishing touches that you put on a game before you release it. Not in a patch because you're so embarrassed by the animations and, you know, people are just making your company the laughing stock of the video game industry. And I just have to say, though, about the animations, like I got through the entire video without mentioning them, I really didn't have a problem with that. The animations were the least of my concerns, as you could see uh, by this review. So... Will I ever play this game again? I really don't know. That's why I played it through to 97% completion because at the time my thinking is I will never, ever do this again because those fetch quests were just outrageous. So I don't know. If the game ever gets finished, if it ever gets fully patched, if there's ever any interesting content, I may review it. And let me just say, this is a... One of the other good things about the game was the tie-ins with Mass Effect 2 and the Reapers and whatnot. However, it's so buried within a fetch quest that you have to find all these pieces of memories that it's just a shame. I mean, I don't know how many people are actually going to get to that to see it, but that should have been something. I would have led with that. If this was my project, if I was doing Mass Effect Andromeda, I would have led with cutscenes with the arcs escaping the Milky Way right before the Reaper attack. I would have had clips or cameos or whatnot from Shepard and the rest of the squad and everybody that's involved in this thing. 
I would have made this so dramatic and so thrilling. I mean, I would have been screaming at the beginning that, oh my God, they barely got away from the Reapers. But no, we didn't get anything like that. But the, I have to say the audio clips were decent and they, they did evoke a lot of emotion. But it just still, it could have been done so much better. It really could have. All right, I'm signing out. I think I've said as much as I can. Five out of ten, folks. So, you know, buy at your own risk. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next video.